The Lord is with you. Also with you. As we gather virtually in our homes in various places, wherever you find yourself, I know some of you um, are helping kids move at this time. Um, just wanted to remind you that this is our chance this week uh, to welcome our new council. We'll have a video clip um, installing them in their roles and leadership here in the congregation, and they'll name for you their uh, ministry areas or their role on council. I'm grateful for each one of them continuing on or joining council at this time. I also wanted to alert you to a resource that's going to be coming in the mail to you in the next couple of weeks, depending on how long Canada Post takes to get to your home. And it's a reflection piece. Um, it's a three, folded in three ways. It's a reflection guide that's from Pastor Kimber, Pastor Kimberlyn McNabb, who is at Halifax Lutheran Church in Halifax. <laughs> and she has put together this resource with her permission. We're sharing it with you that allows us as pastor and council to reflect on what you've learned over this last year in the pandemic, what values you think are core to us as a faith community, and how we might move forward together um, in the resurrected Christ. So I and commend this to your attention. I'll refer to it in, our, in my message today as well, but have you look for it in the mail and consider filling it out over like a one hour chunk of time or several days in reflection and prayer and then dropping it back to the church by mail or in the mail slot outside the church office. We're also grateful that our pianist Jeff Hahn has taken some time to prepare a piece for us by Chopin. The first movement of Grand Polonaise Brillante and we get to hear it today as the postlude. So I encourage you to stay through worship the entire service so you can hear Jeff share this piece. We join together in our call to worship. God's salvation is for all. All lands and all peoples. No separation will stand. Between us, the human family, and all creation. Let us praise the Lord of love. Whose grace has redeemed us all. We join in singing, gather us in. Space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us our hearts so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to anchor the soul. Throughout all of history, how do we light in the holy memories? Gather us in the rich and the hearty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us our hearts so weak and so lowly, give us the courage to end the song. Take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of the world. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, all to which move to the soul for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion. Lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not 
in the dark until this can find me Not in some heaven light years away Here in this place the new light is shining Now is the kingdom and now is the day Gather us in and pull us forever Gather us in and make us your own Gather us in all peoples together Fire of love in a flesh in our bones. We confess our sin before God and one another that we might be set free. Risen Lord, we admit that we are slow to believe and even slower to follow where you lead us. We doubt your promise, divide your people, and fail to proclaim the power of your resurrection. We choose to live small lives when you have given us the biggest gift of all, your eternal life that begins now as we love. Forgive us. Raise, raise us, us up, up to, to serve, serve you faithfully. Christ is risen, bringing gifts of new life and mercy, freeing us from the bondage of sin. Trust that you are forgiven and go out and live in the joy of your Lord's resurrection in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, you showed your followers that their salvation didn't depend upon culture or traditions, but on the grace freely offered by your Spirit. Show us the same open vision of mercy offered to all, regardless of background or practice. For the, for the sake, sake of the whole world. world. Amen. Amen. We join together in our gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. These are the words of Simeon, who greeted the infant Jesus in his arms and praised God by saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you've prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grateful for those who are reading the scriptures for us today, Wendy McKenzie and Jen Gill, before we hear their reading from the sequel to Luke's Gospel, which is Acts of the Apostles, um, in the 15th chapter, I wanted to show you some images from the original church, uh, Christian church, in Antioch. It's in southeastern Turkey, and it came to my attention because the context of our reading today, Paul and Barnabas have just traveled to this church um, before they arrive in Jerusalem, and there's a debate that um, is stirred up as they come back. But I wanted to show you this church because it's hewn out of the rock in the mountain. As you can see, then you walk inside, and that's a part of the altar there that you're seeing. And 
the next slide right there, that is actually a cave that people could flee through and get out the other side of the mountain in case the Roman soldiers showed up in that first century. They'd have an escape hatch, quite literally. And that is the altar um, that is also carved out of stone in that space. And so the original Christian church in the world is this this St. Peter's Church in southern Turkey. So as we hear them coming back from that first journey to that region where um, they were surprised by how the Holy Spirit was filling people um, who'd not been baptized. They simply heard about this Jesus whose um, willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of his message of love um, transformed their lives and the spirit was out ahead of them. So let's hear what happens when they get back to Jerusalem. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 15, verses 1 to 18. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers, who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees, stood up and said, It is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. And after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. From its ruins, I will rebuild it and I will set it up so that all other peoples may seek the Lord even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord, who has been making these things known from long ago. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. As we walk together alongside Paul and Barnabas, and the conversation that they had with the believers in Jerusalem, the early church, the conflict that ensued, and how you changed hearts and minds. In your name we pray. Amen. When the flowers begin to bud and the leaves on the trees open up, everything around us is fresh and green. It motivates us to do spring cleaning. We're surrounded by a fresh start everywhere we look. Typically, this is when most people host garage sales in their front yard. Some neighbors will host them on the same weekend. 
before the pandemic, so you can walk the whole block. But COVID-19 doesn't allow such events. Now people have to go to Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for continuous garage sale. Some of you raised in North Delta have told me about your mothers growing up who would literally empty the house of all the furniture, wash all the windows, and put everything back into the house in the spring. For those of you who grew up in China, the spring festival that we celebrated for 23 days in February and March has been traditionally a time for families to clean the whole house, get new clothes, a haircut, which I definitely need, cook a huge feast, and celebrate with extended family. This kind of sorting and cleaning allows us a chance to figure out what we actually use and need. Several of you, including myself, have moved in the last month. When you move out of a house that you've lived in for several decades and downsize, you have to give away many of your belongings, perhaps sharing them with someone else. Other, our belongings often hold dear memories. Others of you have been going through your family photo albums in the last while, remembering times gone by, perhaps people whom you miss, good times that you've enjoyed as a family. Some of you are scanning and then sim or simply throwing away the photos. I'm doing the same, one album at a week. Clearing storage space for other essentials. Purging gives us a chance to focus on what really matters and clean the slate of our lives. This kind of reflection about our stuff and our relationships can release us from the burden of carrying too much baggage around. It lightens our load and prepares us for what might be next in our lives. In our scripture today, the early church was trying to figure out what to throw away and what to keep. As God's Spirit moved them into new places with new people. Paul and Barnabas had just returned from that first missionary journey to Antioch, where they shared how Jesus sacrificed everything in order to maintain God's message of love for all nations and creatures. This message got Jesus in trouble, and it also got Paul and Barnabas in trouble in trouble with the church in Jerusalem. They were surprised by how the Holy Spirit was out ahead of them, filling people who were not circumcised, cleansing their hearts and changing lives. For generations, the sign of belonging to God was the mark of circumcision on baby boys. This mark on male bodies was a sign of God's promise made to Abraham to bless all families on the earth through his descendants. So for centuries, all the grandbaby boys of Abraham and male converts to Jerusalem to Judaism were circumcised. Circumcision, practicing the Sabbath, following the teachings revealed to Moses, and keeping kosher dietary restrictions was the way God's beloved people were set apart for God's purposes in the world. When Paul and Barnabas returned to Jerusalem, some in the church were teaching that unless people are circumcised, they cannot be saved. Paul and Barnabas disagree because they've seen the Spirit filling and cleansing hearts as they meet new people in new places. This experience along his travels has changed everything. processing what the spirit is up to and something needs to change in his own faith practice paul was blinded by a light on the road to damascus he was hunting down christians and imprisoning them but while blinded he hears a voice that identifies with all these christians that he's been hunting a voice that says why are you persecuting me and he realizes this is the risen Christ. This was God's spirit intercepting Paul's path, giving him a whole new direction and a new way of thinking. 
before the blinding light and even before he traveled to Antioch, Paul had been teaching the same thing as his brothers and sisters in Jerusalem, that in order to be saved, people must be circumcised. But the Spirit had changed Paul's mind as he traveled. The people whose hearts were drawn by God's grace to follow Christ to be culturally unacceptable. It was a form of mutilation. So Paul and Barnabas had not been requiring it. And they were trying to convince the believers in Jerusalem by sharing what they experienced. As the disagreement continued, Peter stands up and he speaks in favor of this change. Peter remembers his own experience, how God opened a door in his heart to relate with Cornelius, an uncircumcised military leader who was drawn into God's grace. Changed by this experience, Peter was willing to associate with Cornelius after a series of visions where he had this sheet with unclean animals come down and he heard this voice saying, get up, kill and eat. And he'd never eaten any of these animals in his entire life as a way to follow the teachings of Moses. So changed by that experience, he was now willing to go and actually be with Cornelius, this uncircumcised Gentile, and ended up baptizing him and his whole household. So Peter says, God, who knows the human heart, God is our heart knower, This God treated the outsiders just as the Spirit has treated us, beginning at the very center of who they were and working from that center outward, cleansing their hearts by faith. The Spirit's made no distinction between them and us. Why are you putting on the neck of the disciples a yoke? That's what this actually represents. This stole that I wear is a yoke. Why are you putting a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we had been able to bear? On the contrary, Peter says, we believe we will be saved through the grace of our Lord Jesus, just as they will. With that, everyone who listened is moved to silence. I wonder what might happen if we kept silent and listen for God to work through unlikely people. Last week during the Synod Study Conference, as I listened to one of our speakers, Stephanie Allen, she's pictured up on the screen for you, I heard the Spirit drawing the church into a new place, a new awareness of Canada's history of slavery and white privilege. This starts with understanding the roots of white supremacy in North American culture, not only in the United States, but also here in Canada. It started back in the 1600s when Canada became a slave-owning colony. In 1834, slavery was abolished by the British colony, but slavery didn't end. Indigenous people were considered two-thirds human, and African slaves, one-third human. So even though slavery was abolished, defining black and indigenous peoples as less than human was a way for colonists in both Canada and the U.S. to justify taking delight in torturing their slaves. In Canada, policing evolved to move indigenous peoples off their lands and for the containment of property. The first mortgages in Canada were put on slaves to invest in future crops. In 1911, the Canadian Department of Immigration was formed to discourage people of color from coming to Canada, saying the climate and requirements of life in Canada are not suitable for immigrants. Today, Stephanie asked us, when we look around, at what's happening during the pandemic. 
Who is working in essential services and getting on transit every day? Who's working from home? How might this reflect the history of slavery and immigration here in Canada? Because of this history, we all inherited racism, whether we are aware of it or not. A set of ideas about white privilege that lives in every human being on our planet, Stephanie said, not just white people. Stephanie Allen has been a local Vancouver advocate for urban development over the last decade that includes affordable, equitable housing for all. She's now the Associate Vice President of Strategic Business Operations and Performance at BC Housing. And she's the co-founder of Hogan's Alley Society in the Strathcona neighborhood of Vancouver, a place where the first immigrant families in Vancouver landed. Stephanie reminded us that race, categorizing people by the color of their skin, is a human construct, just like money. We use paper and coins to exchange value for goods and services. We all agree to this system that we imagined centuries ago. Race is something we human beings have come up with. We've labeled one another. But the shade of our skin simply reflects where our people originally congregated, near the equator or far from the equator. No matter how much melanin is in our skin, our hair, and our eyes, we all share the same genetic makeup as human beings. Race is a human construct, and it's based on fear and the need to feel safe. Fear that there may not be enough to go around. Faith, as Stephanie expressed, involves, on the other hand, love, open-heartedness, kindness, and compassion. On the cross, Christ gave everything, everything so that there would be enough love to go around. These days, I have the privilege of walking along the Fraser River, watching the ducks forage along the banks and the seals swim in the current. From our new neighborhood, I can see the church just around the bend, and I wonder about how life was for all the immigrant families drawn to fish salmon on this river. Building their homes along the banks, Vivian Oswald's grandmother ran a grocery store across the railroad tracks in the shadow of the Alex Fraser Bridge. This river has been running logs and spawning salmon for countless generations of First Nations and immigrant families. And it still flows today with tugboats hauling barges slower than my walking pace. Like the Fraser River flowing to the sea, the love of Christ moves among us. We don't need to ration it out to everyone. The river poured out on the cross will never run dry. As Christ followers, we are people who walk in an overflowing stream of love. This expansive love is flowing through you right now, filling your heart to overflowing, cleansing your heart by faith. Streams of living water will flow through those who follow me, Jesus said. We do nothing to earn this. It is a free gift. We've all inherited racism. The challenge is, how do we come to terms with it? Our first response may be guilt. How might we cultivate curiosity instead? I commend to your reading this resource that will be in the mail as a way to perhaps consider reflecting on what you heard in my message today. Take time to let it settle into your awareness. Sit with it. And as you sit, streams of living water will fill you. Now may the peace that passes all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together in singing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. My 
hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Veils his lovely face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Of Christ the solid rock I stand. His covenant is born, sustain me in the raging flood. All supports are washed away, be then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the sinking sand when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found for dear his righteousness alone redeemed to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand We join together at this time in installing our church council. I invite you to welcome them. Dear Christian friends, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we are called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the church in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us. It is our privilege to recognize and support those who are engaged in the work of this congregation especially those in the Ministry of Leadership on Council. Each one of these people gathered here tonight have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership at our last annual general meeting. We are asking them to remember that in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated all of us from sin and death and made us members of God's church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nurtured in faith. I ask you, together with all who are here gathered, to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we are baptized. We join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
St. Paul writes, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You each have been elected to counsel, to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this family of faith reflect Christ in whose name we gathered. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this wider community and in the whole world. You're to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You're to be an example of faith active in love to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. On behalf of your siblings in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties of this office to which you've been elected? If so, please answer yes by the help of God. Yes, yes, yes by, by the help, help of God. God. I now invite you to introduce yourselves and your particular role, your focus of ministry area or your role on council. We'll start with Brenda. So, um, I'm Brenda Falvik and I am this year's council chair. I'm very new to uh, TLC, so I'm looking forward to getting to work with the rest of the members of the council and hopefully getting to meet all the membership and just really growing in my faith from a, switching from a church where I discovered the doctrine was not open enough for, for the love that I was feeling. And, and I feel that Trinity Lutheran definitely is. So uh, that's who I am. And I'm looking forward to this year. Welcome, Brenda. Michael? Yes. Hi there, I'm Michael Robertson. And yes, I, I like being on council. And which area do you focus on? Um, traditional life. Congregational life. Awesome. Good to have you, Michael. And Maureen? Yes, hi, I'm Maureen Jones, and I am looking forward to this year on council as serving in a new role as vis in visitation ministries and reopening church task force. Thanks, Maureen. Lucy. Um, I'm Lucy Tian. I'm the chair of the council. This is the third year I'm on the council. It's very it's good um, opportunity for me to learn a lot of things through in the um, in the from this congregation. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Hello, I am Vanessa French, and I'm the new secretary for Council. And I also um, contribute to the reopening task force for the church. Larry. Hi, I'm Larry McBride, and uh, I have been on Council now for about six months or more, I think, maybe a little more. And I quite enjoy it. I look after um, buildings and grounds, and um, I am enjoying it. Thank you. And Larry's also serving on the task force for reopening the building as well. Yes, yeah, I've got, yes, I am. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Thank Larry. You. Thank you. Rosa. Yeah. yeah, so hello, everybody. I'm Rosa Maria van der Berg Lasso, and uh, I'm uh, helping as vice chair for a second time and uh, with Brenda and um, I'm uh, also involved in the uh, intergenerational faith formation, including education for adults and the way with, with Wendy McKenzie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rosa. So we are delighted that each one of you has said yes. I now declare you installed as members of Council for Trinity Lutheran Church. May God bless you with the Holy Spirit, that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Let us pray. For all who offer themselves in your name, we give thanks, O God. 
Give them the joy of service and constant care and guidance. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of ministry, that your name be glorified, your people live in peace, and your will be done through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. By your spirit, you change the minds of the early disciples, guiding them towards grace and a willingness to move beyond their circle. Likewise, keep us focused on your wide mercy and inclusion of all, willing to dialogue and follow your spirit. God of all, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As our Orthodox Christian siblings celebrate the festival of Easter this weekend, revive our own joy at the news of your resurrection and fill us with the gladness of your promises. God of all, hear our prayer. You've made every one of us unique, and we each have something to bring to the body of Christ. Help us recognize and value our particular contributions and the things which make us different and important. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. God of all, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. God of all, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Unlock fixed minds and entrenched beliefs which focus on separation and keeping those with whom we differ at a distance. Show us the healing that needs to take place so that we can embrace all of ourselves and thus embrace others. Send your spirit's presence to those in need, especially Dee Hansen's daughter, Kara, and her granddaughters who are ill with COVID-19. Liz Usel's daughter, Janet, recovering from a minor surgery. Shannon Christofik's father, Gary Smith, as he nears death. And Shannon's three-week-old niece, McKenna, who is battling infection in hospital. Jocelyn Jong's mother, recently diagnosed with lung cancer, Andrea Reyes' son-in-law, John, daughter Cecilia, and granddaughters Claire and Lillian, as John is ill with COVID-19. Linda Bartman's daughter, Kathy, as she recovers from open-heart surgery. Emma, Brooklyn, and Nicola Ladmore. Rosemary Roshot awaiting hip surgery. Charlotte Yu and family, as Charlotte receives immunotherapy, awaiting further cancer treatment in Toronto. Rowan Dawson, as she prepares for surgery. Nathan Wu, and Magnar Bjorsvik's goddaughter, Cassandra, as she seems to recover in hospital in these days. God of all, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. As our siblings in Ontario, Alberta, and India scramble to respond to the spread of virus variants, come alongside all suffering extreme loss of life, gather the grieving in your comforting embrace, sustain healthcare workers, and spare lives as patients struggle for each breath. God of all, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. There's a song we're about to learn that's called The Peace of the Lord. And there's a verse in that song that says, the peace of the Lord kept within cannot live. So open yourselves now to share it. That's what we are doing right now. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. I invite you to turn to someone near you in your home if you're alone to pick up the phone or text someone and share that peace. It will grow as you give it away. In the same way, when we give of ourselves, our time, our possessions, our financial resources, our hearts are opened to our neighbors. It expands our capacity to love. It is the Holy Spirit moving through us. I invite you to be generous with yourself, with your finances at this time, as we continue to weather this pandemic together, always seeking ways 
to draw us together. Join us in prayer. Bless the gifts we offer and guide us to the ones who need our witness of love, mercy, and good news. Open our hearts each moment to where we may best serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. By your grace, draw your children to your table. Wherever you find yourself, I invite you to break bread, share wine or grape juice with those nearby. With these words, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. We join together in singing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, creator, savior, and spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. We join in singing the song I spoke of as we shared the peace. It's called The Peace of the Lord. I invite you to join in if it's a new tune for you. The peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.